Apparently he has escaped from most of his clothing as well. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad. I'm on my way to Kentucky to get ready for a show in Kansas next weekend over Labor Day, so I'm a busy guy. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you where we are. This is Big Peach Antique Mall. It's right by the freeway. What a great location. Lots of visibility, and so you can see it's already pretty busy on a Monday morning. I see in the back there's a couple of old cars. So I've got to park over here anyway, so we might as well show the neighbor is in the old cars or actually I think this might be someone involved with the antique mall because it's the same building. There's the back end of a 57 Chevy and a Jeepster. That's when they took Jeeps after World War II and made them into little passenger vehicles because people were desperate for cars and they would buy anything that ran that was new and actually the Jeepster was a pretty cool car. And then this car here is a restoration project to be sure, but this looks like a late 20s or early 1930s Packard. Packard's theme at the time was Ask the Man Who Owns One. Not so many women drove cars at this time, and if they did, they tended to be lighter cars because these cars had manual everything and they were actually rather cumbersome to drive by today's standards. But this is an old Packard awaiting restoration. Packards were very expensive, classy cars up there on the same level as Cadillacs and other high-end marks. Okay, I'm going to have to don my mask here in a second, but I am in a little back cubby part of the store where I wanted to look at you one more time when I'm mask-free so I can say hello again. and. Behind me, I've got a row of Tiara Christmas mugs for the Irish coffee done in the late 70s and early 80s. Tiara did a lot of reproduction depression glass in that time, too. They were a home deal. You know, you could uh, have parties in your house and sell directly to your friends and that kind of thing. These are piano babies, and these are the original ones. I believe they're called that because they sat atop a piano. They are porcelain. You see reproductions of these from the 1960s, but these are the originals. They have a mark on the back that is going to be hard to see in here. Let's see if we can get it in a good light. Maybe you can get at least a little of it. There's one more. We'll see if it's visible there, too. But this represents the mark of the Hoibach, H-E-U. B-A-C-H company. Here's another one. We'll see if it has a deeper mark that we can show you. Okay, that one has just the impressed number underneath there. The painting is mellower and just frankly has an older look and they usually have a little bit of a dust coat from being sat out for years and years like this one does. So that's an indication of the originals. And they price in the about $150 to $200 range typically. Now this one is a 1970s version. Notice how it's a little brighter. It doesn't have as much patina because it hasn't sat out for as long. This one's a pretty good one, but it's just not quite the same and it's a subtle distinction. Hopefully you can get some feel for that just by looking. But they are a collectible area in and of themselves. And here's an etagere set with some really fine old pieces. This is walnut. It's got an interestingly shaped mirror and a lot of detail. This should date to right about 1900. This would have been at the front of a foyer or a prominent place in a fancy home. It's priced with the discount at about $1,200. We sold one similar to this at an estate sale for $9.50, so I think $1,200 is actually a pretty good deal on this. And there's some nice pieces of older glass. I talk a lot about how Fenton glass has very even crimps, and if they're not even, it's not Fenton. Well, this is peach blow, the pinky color with the white, and this is Victorian. It's before Fenton. We're going to show a Fenton peach blow basket Look how uniform the crimps on this are. They're all pretty much the same shape, size, and depth 
as opposed to this piece that was hand formed. Fenton would have used a tool that was more precise in the 20th century than the Victorians were using. So that's an indication of age. We'll take a look at the bottom. It has a flattened surface and it does have wear like it should. There were reproductions of peach blow in the 1970s and 80s from a company called AA Imports who we just hated in the antique business. They destroyed the market for a lot of Victorian glass by faking it. However, that one is definitely real because it has the hallmarks of age that it should. And then we have a nice porcelain painted piano lamp with a Rubina shade, Rubina satin that goes from the pink to the satin. And this is hand painted, unlike those Meissen plates we saw earlier, which were a transfer decal. This detail is all painted by hand. Come on, focus camera. So this is all hand painted detail, right down to the roses on the feet. Oh, and look, it's a drinking glass for dad if mom will let him get away with it. These dolls in the case are just cute little things, but I like the lit case. Gives it kind of a nice look. They're only priced at 25 each. These would have been hand painted. These were not expensive when they were new. They're 1950s kitsch and kitsch sells. People love that sort of fun yet slightly cheesy aspect. People were inclined to like fun and happy things after the Second World War because it had been such a difficult time for so long and so people just really wanted bright and fun and cheery. I think we're in a period like that similarly right now. Vintage patterns are collectible and these look like they're 1970s and 80s but older ones especially back into the 50s are really popular uh, 60s and even some of the 70s because those are eras that are coming full force in vintage fashion. These look like 1980s to me, judging by the colors and the cuts. And, well, the 80s are starting to come back in fashion too. Old patterns from the early 1900s are especially valuable. These are all priced about $2 each, but when you get back a little further, you start getting into real money. Now one thing as a reseller shopping in an, an antique mall that's been around for a while is you will sometimes see 50% off sales. This mall has been here 25 or 30 years. People grow old. Occasionally people get out alive in the antique business and retire. A lot of times, unfortunately, it's actually that someone has passed on. But everything in this space is 50% off, including this crazy folded fire hose in an interesting rack, which would be 75. That's actually not a bad price. If I didn't already have a couple of fire hoses, I'd be tempted by that. But I'm gonna shop this one fairly deeply and see if there's anything that I can pick up for resale. I see a Weller vase, but the other thing about an old line antique mall is that sometimes the prices are from 20 years ago as well. And that's why they're having half off because they have to acknowledge that the market has changed. Now this is not bad for $10. Barware is popular. This has a pagoda on the top and an Asian looking scene. This would date to the 1960s. And for $10, let's see if this was a commercial liquor bottle. It does not have a mark that says it was. So I think this was sold as a decanter and that usually is better. The commercial bottles a lot of them were just made so prolifically that they're not interesting to collectors now. The only thing is that might be hard to pour liquor into. But you know, I think for $10 it's probably worth buying, so that will probably go with me. We've got a little bit of Shawnee corn here. 25 that's probably about right, but I find that fairly often in the part of the country I'm in, so... And we've got some old coolers. This one has kind of an interesting design, but it has a hairline crack, unfortunately. I don't know if we can see who made this. It doesn't really say. I've not seen this style before. The red handle and the colors make me think probably 1940s. 
but I don't know who the maker is. There's the base to an old Singer sewing machine, vintage scales, but I have to say the prices so far seem pretty pricey. The pheasant tail and the rattlesnake skin are kind of an interesting display. There's another McCoy pedestal, but I don't have the jardinier to go to that. So, oh, one other thing here. This is a neat pattern of depression glass that I've always liked. Again, it's very geometric. And the fruit bowl is $25 and then half off. It's not a bad price for what it is. This was done right around World War II. Here's a space that I really like. Now, I don't usually find too much I can afford to buy because they know their stuff and they price fairly, but they do a lot of modernism. We're near Macon, Georgia, which is an antebellum town with a lot of wonderful old Civil War historic era type things, and yet there are modern pieces because, again, there's an Air Force base, so there's a population that's moved in and out, and they have some fun things. This is Fostoria Heirloom. It came in happy pastel colors as well as red and orange, 1955 to 65 approximately. A great design, very much a departure for Fostoria, which had done fussy and formal dinnerware up until that time. Priced at $45, that is not a bad deal. Lots of fun things in the case here. This motion lamp is a later one because of the plastic top but they're really fun when they're lit and it spins and the waterfall goes, and it's only $35, which is a pretty good deal. And this is Blue Mountain Pottery out of Canada. This is one of the largest and most modern of their pieces that they made in the green splash glaze, and it's really cool. It's priced at 75. Blue Mountain went out of production in the early 2000s, and I think that that's really not a bad price. But the piece I'm most likely to look at possibly to buy is this because I believe this might be alexandrite glass. See the blue color here. I'm going to take it to the front and look at it and see if it turns purple when it's in a natural light because they said purplish on the tag so I have a feeling it is color changing. This looks like a European piece probably 1980s, but if it changes color, it's well worth the $14 they have on it. In fact, it's worth a bit more, which is why I would like to buy it. And then we've got more fun owls. The one in the back is Kurok, the plastic company out of Monterey. $12 is pretty good on there. We've got a bookend and a little mug, very 70s. Look at the great shape of the base of these mid-1950s to 60s stools. That is just really cool. They need reupholstering, which wouldn't be that hard, but they're priced at $195, which is more than really I think I could get for them. But they're such a great design. A couple more Kurok trays. This dealer does well, and it looks like they've been busy. They're actually a little low on stock. Now, this is a Francoma planter. And it says old, and it is. It looks like Ada clay. I see a little bit of crazing. We're going to take a look at the overall condition and see if this might be a buy. It is Ada clay because it's tan, and after 1955 they moved to Sepulpa and the clay there was red. It's got these little curves with the bubbles on it. Frank was John Frank, his wife was Grace. Grace designed these Art Deco lines with the swirls and bubbles on them. That was her trademark. It's just a low planter bowl. It does have some crazing, but if it doesn't have any cracks at $10, that's a good price. Ada clay is much more collectible. It's the desert gold glaze. I think this is probably a $25 piece, so I'm going to check it over for condition. And then here's another rare color. This is Blanco Rosé. In 1963, the department store in San Francisco wanted Blanco to make them a color that only they could sell. So Blanco, which did not usually do proprietary things like that, agreed to do this pinkish color for them. And then they changed the terms of the deal and Blanco was so mad that they canceled the order and sold it to all of their competitors and would not sell it to them. It was hard to make. It 
was difficult for the kilns to do that color and they only made it in 1963 and 64. These two pieces are California mid-century pottery. The top one just says California USA in block letters. Maurice of California and Joaquin potteries of California use those marks. The main interest is in the glaze. That's really fun with that bright speckled orange. And then this is Cal Originals. California Originals was in business from 1955 to about 1980. They always made wild designs. This one's got a nice label on it. Sometimes they're also marked Cal Originals, but oftentimes they're just painted gold on the bottom. So if you see gold paint on the bottom of a mid-century piece like this, there's a good chance it's Cal Originals. This is a hanging ashtray, that's why the hook. It's funny to think in the 1970s that people would hang ashtrays from the ceiling just like a swag lamp by their sofa and then you'd just reach up and butt your cigarette out in it. And they're very collectible now. This is priced at 35 and that's about right for these styles of hanging ashtrays. Old style English telephone box on this apron, which would be from about 1980. And we see some more quilts here. These look like crazy quilts. Here's a cute head vase. Let's see if it's real or if it's a fake. Well, it looks damaged, so I bet it's real, and it is. It's got the old Relpo mark. Here's some more items that are going to be in the upcoming auction. There's some really great slot machines. This one's a Mills Poinsettia. Now, these have been restored. But these are 1930s and 40s era. And there's a five cent play. This one says all quality mints on the side. This was if you were in a place where you couldn't legally gamble, but you could use them as what they called a trade stimulator, which means that you would actually be selling them with the idea that whatever you won, you would trade for trade checks and then you could spend them on things, in this case mints or other things, I'm sure. I'm sure that was played with a little bit fast and loose. This one with the cherries is out of the early era of legal gambling as well. And then behind we've got a really great Houdini's Death Defying Mystery Escape from an Iron Can Filled with Water. Now my bet is that this was part of a traveling show that did not feature Harry Houdini, but that it was something that was done based on one of his tricks. However, we also see a straight jacket, an original straight jacket from a traveling show. This is a really cool piece. There's a lot of interest in magic tricks and magicians, and this should go for good money, possibly in the four digits. And then here is a picture of the master himself escaping from a jail cell. And apparently he has escaped from most of his clothing as well. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It doesn't cost anything. And hit that like button. And if you're really into it and you do want to be a supporter, you can actually join memberships as well now. So you can click the join button and find out more about that. So now back to the video. This person's gone to a lot of trouble to build a nice display for large items where everything looks kind of permanent and is separated. It's nice to see this rather than pegboard. I have to admit, as time has gone on, I used to be a pegboard fan, but I more and more like displays that look more like you might have it in a house. Here's one of the dog nutcrackers. This one looks like it's cast aluminum, so it's lighter. This is going to be something probably from about the 1950s when you see the aluminum. This, on the other hand, the Cricut doorstop is older, cast iron and painted green. $35 is not a bad price for this old boot jack. Here's a tool dealer, and they've got a neat old bell in here. This one's priced at... $2.95, and that's about the going rate for these these days if they have the harp. And then here's an old fitted shoe sign, fitted for $3.50. You could get your high button boots fitted to your foot. And that's going to be at $2.95 about right because it's a stamped tin, but that is an older piece. 
And then here's a parking meter. These old parking meters are disappearing from cities because they're switching over to these electronic card reads, after which every single time they're more money than they cost before. This one is $89.95. That's about what I got for the last one that I sold. It might be strange to some people to think that old labeled cans are popular, but they are great for decorating. And there's a lot of these that are around because these companies overproduced the labels or the company went out of business before they could fill everything. So you see Cohasset syrup from corn and sugar cane, Dixie made syrup. We're in farm country in Georgia. A lot of these products came from here originally. Red Label Georgia Cane Flavored Syrup, Pride of Virginia Tomatoes, and then Mission Orange Drink. These are little banks from the 1950s. And next to them we have, I'm familiar from my stomping grounds originally, Fresh Columbia River Salmon Pillar Rock Packing Company. Now a lot of these are old labels put on newer cans, so you know, it's really for the look, the label is what you're buying. But the Mission Orange drink, these are original from the 50s, priced at $4.95. I usually can sell these for around $10, so I think I'll pick one up. These folks like copper and brass, and a lot of people do now. These brass trays we used to have trouble giving away at estate sales, and now we're seeing prices in antique stores of $8 and $10 and $12 on them. It's because that decorating trend, which was very popular in the 1970s, has come back into fashion again. Copper is another area that was popular in the 70s, and I believe that that will start to come back into fashion as well. Here's a bunch more brass figures. The owl is kind of a classic from the time. I'm afraid that my schedule is not going to permit me to spend a lot more time showing you things here, so I'm going to just do a little walkthrough so that you can see some more stuff. And we'll stop and pause at this fellow. He seems very stern. I'm thinking he's somebody that we should know from history. And it says that it indeed is the bust of Borgum, who was the sculptor who did Mount Rushmore. That's why it seems to have familiarity. After Arkansas's Niloke pottery stopped doing the mission wear with the swirled natural colors in the pottery, they switched over to molded wear in the 1930s because it was less expensive to make. This one has a very large Niloke mark on it. At my estate sale this weekend, I sold a hot pot from the 1980s that had blue geese on it and they bought it for the blue geese. This was such a ubiquitous pattern. This one's called Gaggle of Geese. This is Louisville stoneware. It's priced at $19 now. I have a hunch that in a few years you'll see this priced at about double that because blue geese are going to come back into style. They were such an iconic 1980s motif. It's just bound to come around again. A lot of people see these ewers and assume automatically that it's Blanco, but it isn't. It is from West Virginia though. When you see these bubbles, especially when they become elongated, the only things Blanco ever did with bubbles in them are very uniform. And they're tiny, like seed bubbles. This, when they become elongated, as you see here, is either by Erickson of West Virginia or Bischoff. This dealer has done some research and is attributing this to Erickson. I'm inclined to think that they're right. It's priced at $24. Nice piece for the price. The right piece is a Lucite lamp. And it says it has a shade somewhere, which I don't see. It's priced at $95. That's going to be from the 1970s. That's not a bad price. I could probably get $30 more in Florida. It's not enough for me to spend the money on it, but there is room in that one. And then this is Sooner glass, but you never see the pink. You see green and orange a lot. This was made in Oklahoma. They did these swans in these wild colors. And this one is priced at $28. It is not a bad price considering that it's an unusual color. If you like these, which a lot of people do, I've definitely known a number of collectors for Sooner glass over the years, and I don't think any of them have this color. Well, this dealer is having a 20% off sale, and I see something that I really like. Actually, I like a lot of this happy stuff. This condiment set, 
which is Japanese from the 50s, is fun. It'd be about $30, but what I'm really after are these. The dealer can't tell because they are not marked. Most of their stuff is, but when you see the three little spider marks, which are the spiders are the things they would, little stilts they'd put this on in the kiln so that when the glaze was applied, it wouldn't stick to the machinery. So you've got one, two, three. They're hard to see, but there are three little specks there. And they didn't mark this Metlox, but this is Metlox Wild Poppy. It's a very 1970s design, and the 70s designs in Metlox are a lot of fun and people like them. They only have it priced at $10 because there wasn't a mark. Just the creamer alone recently sold for $28 on eBay, so I am going to pick these up because it's $8 for the two pieces and the sauce boat, I imagine, has to be worth at least as much as the creamer. So that's a nice deal. Now, I wish they hadn't put tape on the gold because sometimes this thin gold paint on metal comes off, but I'm hoping I can get these off. These are wooden, they're flamingos, they're souvenir of Merritt Island, Florida. And these would be from about the time I lived in Merritt Island, Florida in the 1970s as a kid. Well, we lived near Merritt Island. Merritt Island was where I got my first bicycle that didn't have training wheels. And it's $6 minus 20%. I know these will sell in Florida, so I'm going to go ahead and get them. They also have this cute little bird figurine that's only $4.80. This looks like it is one of the Ohio makers, probably Royal Copley, to tell you the truth. And that one is $4.80, and it's got a nice bird in flight aspect. I probably should take that too, but I have a lot of figurines right now. And then we have a picture of what kills the collector market. Here's a napkin doll. You would put napkins on the table in these. They'd stick out of her little dress and that would be a cute centerpiece display on the table. I looked at her and I thought, she seems a little wrong somehow. The face doesn't seem painted quite the way an old one should be. And when I turn it here, made in China for Lillian Vernon. Well, thank you, Lillian Vernon, for helping destroy the collector market for another antique and vintage item by producing a new reproduction of something that you could buy in an antique store for, frankly, not a lot more money. I don't really understand what the appeal of these pieces is to buyers in the marketplace today when there's a ready abundance of things like it priced similarly. I understand that people want to just be able to order things and have them appear, but you know what? Buy from a reseller. You could get something to really nicer than that for the same price that is not a new fake. Here's a cute little vintage dress. 1950s. It's sort of almost folk costumey in its way. This is priced at about 40, but it's got a nice old label on it. We're near Atlanta, so aviation related things come around, and this one is a little Great American flying machine. It's not wildly old, but this is something that Delta Airlines made available to some of its employees to give to their children and grandchildren. It's very cute. There are not many of them around and it's priced at $125. I would say it's probably from the 1990s looking at the logo. For maximum kitsch, here's the Ashbrook Lighted Mission. I have had the Ashbrook San Francisco scene that lights, but this one all the little windows in the mission light up when you hang this on the wall. And you can see the quality is not great. It's not particularly painterly. It's not trying to be. It has the Ashbrook signature. That's actually a factory production. Ashbrook was perhaps a designer, but it may have been a made up name too. They made lots of these at the time. There aren't many left. They're great kitsch from the 1960s and 70s. This one's priced at $145. They've got a bunch of vintage vinyl here too, which is appropriate because they've got vintage 50s music playing in the background. I have to talk over it, unfortunately, so I won't be able to really stop and show you a lot of this, but it looks like they've got a lot of rock era and the types of things people are looking for now, and they featured a few particular ones. Here's Joni Mitchell on the right. This is introducing the Beatles, so that's pretty early. And then next door in Alabama, that's where Jimmy Buffett is from. He lives in the Keys in Florida now. 
I have to say his concerts and his fans are a lot of fun. Here's a variation on the McCoy Swan you don't see very often because it's got the painting. And it also is not marked McCoy, but it is McCoy. You'll see it in the book. It is listed and known, and it's priced at $30 because of the painting. Here's a case of uranium glass all lit. It certainly pops when you have the black light on it. Even when you have the rest of the lights on, you still see how much this glows. I like the dolphin candlestick particularly well. And then there's the 1930s depression glass that glows. You've got the ice bucket, the octagon shaped bowl, etc. Now that so much is electronic, people like these old cafe boards, even ones from the 1980s like this are collectible now because people are using them in homes for fun applications or to spell out things like don't eat the cookies for their kids. <laughs> Here's the 1960s Coke electric clock. And I wanted to show this. This is a happy yellow vase by Hager and it's got the Royal Hager stamp on it even though Royal Hickman in all likelihood did not design that piece because this is 70s era and he's pretty close to retired at that point. But he did go back and design other things for them after he left them in the 1950s, so it is entirely possible that he had something to do with it. And then because we're near Atlanta, we have every imaginable Coca-Cola commemorative bottle. They made commemoratives for so many different people, in fact, they still do. These are everything from Masonic from the 1980s, Kentuckiana Fun Summer Weekend on the Sternwheeler. That one's actually pretty hard to get. That one's priced at 45, but a lot of these start as little as five or six dollars. This one was for Gillies, the famous tavern in Pasadena, Texas. That one's priced at 50 bucks. The Collectors Club had a bottle made. You've got the Division Three National Champion West Georgia team commemorated on a bottle. That one's $9. 1980, uh, 1984 U.S. Olympics. That one's $8. If you are into Coca-Cola, there's just a ton of collectibles, newer and older. Not only are they owls, but they have rhinestone eyes, which makes them doubly great. Let's see what the price is. Oh, they have cork stoppers, so they've got a little more age, and they're $8. It's really not a bad price at all. Not with the rhinestone eyes. Those are cute. And here we are with the older Coca-Cola collectibles. We've got the small Acton Manufacturing Cooler. You can see their mark on it. What's nice is that it's in really good, clean, original condition, not restored. This one as well. If the paint is more than half there, you really should leave things alone and not restore them. This one's got a little bend in the top. That does devalue it some. And then look at these great Wurlitzer jukeboxes. That one in the back is just a classic. Everything lights up. I believe bubbles rise up the sides. It's just amazing. It's under the Bowtie Coca-Cola advertising sign. Here's an old Coke sign from a pharmacy, probably about 1940. In fact, we can see right here, a little older than that, made in USA, 1933. The bow tie on the green trim sign is going to be 1960s, early 60s, and then Here's a lovely lady and a gentleman sharing a Coke on a very large sign dated 1942. Some more vendor model slot machines. There is some really cool stuff in this mall. Wonder Horses are collectible now too. And this one actually says Wonder Horse. If you wonder why I call it that, well that's because it is a Wonder Horse. This is for very little cowboys and cowgirls three and four and five year olds to bounce up and down on back in the day and then the one next to it is a radio flyer. This is a more recent version of the original but the originals only sell for about forty dollars and 
that one's in really good shape. And they are still just as much fun for little kids to bounce up and down on as they were then. Now here's some more things that are going to be in the auction and there's some really cool music boxes from little miniature organs from Eastern Europe and Germany. These are Victorian. You never see these available anymore. This is a great collection that they're going to be selling here. Gebrüder Riemer, which is the Riemer brothers. And look at the detail and the work in all of this. All of these are going to make different sounds. These are going to be crank driven, just beautiful machines. Up here you see this one's got the soundboard. You can see this one has a cylinder and each one of those little prongs makes a different sound when it goes up against the strikers. And then in the back there's an old organ probably from a church. Fantastic stuff. A very nice collection. Here's a big old cylinder disc player. These are items that oftentimes can sell in the thousands of dollar range. So this will be a wonderful, interesting auction. I wish I could go. A lot of neat old posters. Again, a bunch of magician related magician items always sell for two to five hundred dollars is the typical range, sometimes more. You see a lot of Carmi. He was very popular. And then here's a Symphonian chime. This would have been from a Nickelodeon, which was basically a place that you went to hang out and have fun and spend a nickel on various amusements. And this music player would have been one of them. Really neat stuff you just don't see anymore. Well, I know we've got some fans in Indiana, and here are Purdue Boilermaker glasses made by, if you look at the bottom, ooh, big rainstorm you can hear probably overhead. The shield with the F is Federal Glass out of Chicago. These are only $3 a piece. I'll bet somebody is a Purdue fan. I think I'm going to pick these up. Well, while these nice folks wrap my thing, I'm going to pull my mask down and everyone looks better in crystal, right? Be surrounded by golden crystal and you'll look great. So I just wanted to say thank you for joining me again. It's really fun to be bringing you Big Peach Antique Mall. It's one of my favorite stops on the I-75 trail. I will see you soon. I'm George the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And have fun out there antiquing and hunting for vintage, and I will too, and we'll share stories soon. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!